Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope that you guys are doing well. También quiero mandarle un beso y un abrazo a todos mis dominicanos que estén mirando. Se les quiere bastante. So, I decided to do today's video. Um, one, based on some historical research about DR that I've been doing lately. And also because I've noticed that within these past few years, Dominicans and, you know, members of the Dominican diaspora, I guess you could call it, have kind of been going through what I think is a sort of identity crisis. Um, a lot of Dominicans are really starting to question, you know, who we are, our history, who we come from. And on the one hand, I do think it's good that a lot of Dominicans and Dominican Americans or wherever they're at are taking more of an initiative to learn more about our history, you know, myself included, because I think knowing your history, knowing where you come from and the people that you come from helps to give us a better understanding of who we are as individuals. Now, before I get on with the rest of the video, I just wanna say, I know there are many of you that are kind of new around here, so you guys might not really know how I do yet. But I just want to make it very clear that I am not biased, okay? I am not biased uh, towards Dominicans, I'm not biased towards Black people, and I'm not biased towards white people. Now, while I do defend most Dominicans, I do not defend ignorance, but I also will not tolerate any non-Dominicans trying to bash Dominicans. So let's just make sure that's clear okay for anyone that's going to be commenting under this video dominican or not dominican okay so one thing that i have learned when it comes to history is that history is not and has never been just black and white um it is never as simple as good and bad there are always multiple sides to a story the good guys are not always 100% good, and the bad guys are not always 100% bad. Um, I also think that when looking at history, we must be mindful to try and remain as objective as possible and not allow our emotions to kind of warp history in our minds just to fit our own narrative. For example, when it comes to slavery, we obviously all know the immense role the Europeans played in the slave trade, in the exploitation of West Africa, in the brutal treatment that was inflicted upon, upon the slaves by the Europeans. However, I think it's sometimes hard for us to acknowledge or admit that there were also Africans that played a role in slavery and that there were some that sold slaves to the Europeans. Or something else that I think um, many don't know is that there were actually Black African conquistadors that accompanied the Spanish when they were conquering, you know, these lands over here. But then, and then on the other side, when it comes to white people, I know it can be very easy to paint them all with the same brush and say that they're all evil and racist, given their history in many parts of the world. So... It can be hard for us to separate individual Europeans that were not this way from the image that we know of them historically. For example, uh, not all of the Europeans in Latin America were uh, enslaving and raping people. Um, in Santo Domingo, for example, there was, I believe he was a priest. His name was Bartolome de las Casas. He even spoke out against the mistreatment of the native Tainos. And then uh, when you look at, you know, white people here in America, I know it's especially easy to label them all as racist, especially given the history of racial segregation in this country. However, um, there were actually quite a few white folk that were against slavery. For example, the Quakers of Philadelphia, many of them were known to be abolitionists that actually played a key role during the Underground Railroad, and many of them even housed runaway slaves in their homes while they were making their way north. Or, you know, you have some white people that actually, 
you know, stood and marched alongside black people during the civil rights movement. And y'all already know why people was mad at them. <laughs> but, you know, the point is, uh, there are going, there are opposing people within the same group that actually did coexist at the same time. They may not have been the majority, but they were there. So again, history is never just black and white. There are going to be opposing people within the same group, like I said, that coexisted at the same time. And sometimes I feel like if you bring these things up, then some people will accuse you of trying to romanticize history or trying to downplay the negative things that happen when it's like, no, that's not what I'm doing at all. I'm simply stating facts like that. That's all it is. Now, whether you want to accept it or not, you know, that's entirely up to you. But the point is, there are good and bad people in every group. That just is what it is. Now, bringing it back to my dear Dominicans. Um, so, as I personally learn more about Dominican history, and even some of the history of the neighboring countries, I am realizing that even though you know, all of these countries experienced colonization and slavery, things played out quite differently in each country, um, mainly during the colonial period. And those differences, I believe, impacted how we view ourselves today. And now I have to say that when it comes to DR, I do believe that we had quite the peculiar history. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Dominican, but the more I learn about Dominican history, I'm like, okay, things are making more and more sense now. So when it comes to Dominicans, I think that we all take pride in being multiracial, uh, more multicultural even. I mean, DR has literally had a uh, migrants from, from everywhere. Because apart from the Spanish, I mean, you had Portuguese and French that came over. I mean, we had Italians, Germans. We've had uh, Jews that Trujillo brought over. Uh, the Japanese immigrants that Trujillo also brought over. Not to mention all the Chinese and Koreans that we have there now. And then apart from the original African slaves that were brought to DR, there's also, you know, the African-American freed slaves that were taken to Samana, and then the uh, Black migrant workers from some of the Anglophone Caribbean countries that came to DR, many of which ended up staying. So, I mean, we've literally had people from all over come into DR. And, you know, they all made their own little special contributions and made what we know as Dominican culture today. So, um, you know, I think it is normal for us to take pride in that. But I do think that at the core of our identity has always been the image of the mulatto, the biracial or mixed black and white person. And to an extent, that is actually quite accurate. When you look up information online about countries with um, high mulatto populations, DR is always number two or number three uh, spot on that list. And this is looking at countries worldwide where, you know, they're considered to have large mulatto uh, populations. So there was indeed a lot of mixed racing that happened in the country, which dates back to the colonial period, which I'll get back to. So what I'm seeing now are like these two extreme views. On the one hand, I'm seeing Dominicans or some Dominicans basically claiming that from the 16th to the 19th century, we were basically a bunch of white people. Santo Domingo was an overwhelmingly white colony of Spaniards with like a speck or two of black people that all of a sudden turned black once Haiti took over the entire, the entire island in the 1800s, which I'm like, oh, that's what you believe? Okay, like where are you getting this information? DR has never been an overwhelmingly white country. It never has. Like, I don't know where people are getting this idea. And I think this is where the we have to be careful not to let our, to let our uh, emotions and feelings kind of warp reality. Because at the end of the day, some of these Dominicans feel that, you know, 
identifying with Spain and whiteness gives us some sense of superiority or importance. And so now they're trying to change history and say that we were a country just full of white people up until 200 years ago, which I'm like, sorry to break it to you, but that was never the case. But then on the other end, I see uh, some Dominicans also now saying that we are and have always been a black country and that we should consider ourselves the second black republic after Haiti, which I'm like, mm, that's not quite accurate either. Um, because while there was a considerable black and mulatto population in DR, there was also a considerable white population in DR. And not to mention, there's always been like an inflow of uh, European migrants that have always come to the country. So uh, I do not believe that to be accurate either. So I wanted to, in this next little section, give a historical background um to kind of explain where we are now uh and what i believe to be the source of the infamous dominican in denial um because while i feel that stereotype is very much exaggerated you know stereotypes don't just come out of nowhere you know what i mean so that is what i will get into in this next little section so History tells us that the bulk of the enslaved Africans that were brought to the colony of Santo Domingo were brought at the beginning of the 16th century. They worked the gold mines and they worked the sugar plantations of the time. However, the sugar industry in Santo Domingo ended up declining dramatically and uh, to the point where the majority, the majority of the population was living in poverty. Um, in 1691, a man named Don Francisco Franco de Torquemada literally made a plea to the Spanish crown asking if they could bring in more slaves on credit, okay? So that just shows you how broke they were when they were basically asking for a line of credit to bring in more slaves because they could not afford to pay for them up front, okay? So they were asking if they could bring in more slaves in order to help like re-stimulate the agricultural production and you know kind of help boost up the economy. So because the economy during this point ended up like deteriorating to the point where the plantation system was broke down, uh slavery for the most part became uh untenable because they could not financially afford to bring in, you know, more slaves really. And so what happened is that this ended up over time breaking down some of those rigid racial barriers that existed that was seen on the plantation and the number of free black people grew dramatically. And at the same time, the social distance between whites and blacks also shrunk dramatically. So this basically helped uh, create the uh, emergence, one, of interracial marriages, which would give rise to an ethnically hybrid population uh, in which the mulatto became the predominant type of person uh, seen in Santo Domingo. And there were actually multiple eyewitness accounts from this time period. I believe they were mostly Frenchmen that came from Saint Domingue, which is Haiti, to Santo Domingo. Because remember, at this point, Saint Domingue was thriving. I mean, Saint Domingue was literally the most profitable colony of the French at one point. I think it was named the Pearl of the Caribbean. Like they, the French were getting rich off of Saint Domingue. Meanwhile, in Santo Domingo, the Spanish were like uh what's the word they were just not what they were not doing well economically just put it that way and so these accounts from these men um they pointed out the scarcity of black slaves for one and they were basically like reprimanding the spanish be and talking about how they just uh let their blacks walk around freely and that the lack of slaves is why they were in the economic position that they were so fast forward to the 18th century, 
um, this large class of mulatos and free blacks would in a sense become decolorized in the color of the ruling class and the word black um, became reserved for the you know less numerous uh, black slaves. So the sphere of blackness um, became associated exclusively with slavery and subversion while also creating like an alternative space now where the free blacks and mulatos were able to step outside of their racial reality and it created this split between biological blackness and social blackness. So for a lot of people, um, their race was no longer really a determining factor in the forefront of their minds. Blackness became a word that was associated with being a slave. And I don't know about y'all, but to me, I was like, dang, yo, that's pretty deep, <laughs> you know? So the color of your skin didn't necessarily dictate uh, your social position anymore. For example, there was a term called blancos de la tierra, which means whites of the land. And in many cases, it was actually free people of color calling themselves that. Um, so the idea of whiteness equating higher social status, I mean, that never went away. That remained, of course. Um, it's just that the actual physical color um, attached to it kind of changed. And there were even, uh, there was one account from this one man, I believe he was a Frenchman as well. He even said that the so-called whites of the colony, a lot of them, you could tell they weren't fully whites. He said you could tell that there was some type of mixture in them, which at that point, I think it is very likely that a lot of the so-called white people, unless they were recent migrants from some of these countries, they had some type of uh, mixture, whether it was a native or African mixture dating back a few generations. So um, while from a social perspective, this would be great for the mixed Dominicans and the Dominicans of African descent, and you know, because they were able to socially climb and almost reach the status of the white ruling class, the downside is that it distanced them from the biological reality of being black. And that right there is what I believe was the source of the so-called Dominican in denial or the visibly black Dominican saying that they are not black. So fast forward to today, um, you may see many comments from Dominicans saying, you know, that we're not obsessed with race the way the U.S. is. Um, we view everyone the same. At the end of the day, we're all Dominicans. And personally, I do actually believe that many Dominicans genuinely feel this way. And I say that because that is what I witnessed in my family. My family is very mixed. We have very light Dominicans, Dominicans more in the middle, and very dark Dominicans. And I never witnessed any real separation or like a real big distinction being made between the whiter ones or the blacker ones. So I really do think that some Dominicans believe that to be true. Um, And so, you know, the topic of race you know, kind of being non-existent or whatever, or not really being at the forefront of people's minds. You know, I do think that is something that goes back to the deracialized consciousness that developed during the colonial period. And when it comes to Dominicans in, in denial, do I think that's like the case for the majority of Dominicans? No, I do not. Um, there, it is very few Dominicans that I have come across and it's mainly online that I can say really try to deny or downplay that aspect of the heritage. I mean, even most of the so-called white Dominicans, they'll tell you, well, you know, I'm considered white because either they're, they're very fair skinned or whatever, but they also don't deny that they have African blood. I honestly don't believe that most Dominicans deny it. Like, how can you deny it? Just look around like, I don't, anyway, but unfortunately, this is not the case for all Dominicans. And there are those that wish to 
align themselves more with whiteness as much as possible um, because as I've stated in a previous video the idea that white is right and the closer you are to whiteness the better uh, that ideology never really went away and um, you know at the end of the day racism and colorism does exist in DR and I think that goes for any society in which you have a mix of white brown and black people like it is what it is. We are definitely not exempt from that. But do I feel that it is like a overly prevailing thing in DR? No, I do not. Um, and, you know, when it comes to these Dominicans that, especially the ones that are like very notably mixed or more black, I, I just don't see why, you know, I just feel like why can't we just be proud to be Dominican? Like, I feel like we have such an awesome, unique culture you know and we have so many groups that have contributed towards this amazing culture and at the end of the day i've said this before i'll say it again i really do believe that that african influence is what really makes our culture lit you know so i don't know why not to be proud to be dominican like why try so much to align yourself with Spain, especially considering that the culture of Spain now, or cultures, I should say, because even within Spain, there's multiple cultures. It's so distinct from our culture. So I just, I just don't personally get it. Like, sure, I can be proud that some of my heritage comes from Spain, but that's not the only place my heritage comes from. And at the end of the day, my loyalty is to being Dominican. It's like to DR, not to Spain or any other country. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just feel like, and also if you're a black Dominican, what's wrong with being proud to be black? Like, what is so wrong with being black? Like, I just don't understand. Like, when I look at the people in my family that are obviously black, like, I could never view them as being any less than the whiter people in my family, you know? So I just feel like, be proud to be who you are. If you're regardless of whether you're white you're mixed you're black whatever you want to identify as just be proud to be who you are and if you're dominican just be proud to be dominican <sighs> so um that was it for this video so thank you for listening to my little historical lesson for the day but before i end the video i just wanted to include a little clip of my grandfather's 96th birthday they had a party for him in santo domingo yesterday so it was quite nice so i'll include you know a little clip of that and yeah um hope you guys like the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll check you guys in the next video bye <laughs>